taking up good vibrations. Let us compute the Fourier coefficients for a given example. This example is a periodic rectangular wave. We have considered an analogous example in continuous time, and there it was relatively easy to compute the Fourier co series coefficients. However, in discrete time, it will be more difficult. Let us start. Here, we simply have the formula for the Fourier coefficients ak in discrete time. We are going to consider this formula over a different interval, corresponding also to values of capital N of n over a period. If, for instance, capital N is even, we can consider the summation that is originally in the interval n equals 0 until capital N minus 1 in the new interval from n equals minus capital N over 2 until capital N over 2 minus 1. However, since in this interval the rectangular wave is only non-zero in the interval from n equals minus capital N1 until capital N1, we can consider instead this interval. We can always do this. Consider the summation over values of n in an arbitrary period instead of the canonical values from n equals 0 until capital N minus 1. This is a good opportunity for us to discuss why this is the case. We can partition the summation from n equals 0 until capital N minus 1 into two summations from n equals 0 until capital N1 and from capital N1 plus 1 until capital N minus 1. However, in the latter interval, the function is 0 from n equals capital N1 plus 1 until n equals capital N minus capital N1 minus 1. We can start the second summation from n equals capital N minus capital N1 since, since now x of n is 1 for each value of n in this summation we can simply remove it. Now for the second summation we are going to apply a change of variables. We'll call n prime to be n minus capital N1. The limits of the summation in terms of n are capital N minus capital N1 and capital N1. And if we simply replace these values in the formula for n prime, we obtain n prime equals minus capital N1 and n prime equals minus 1. If we replace n by, cap by n prime plus capital N in e to the power of minus j 2 pi over capital N k n, we obtain e to the power of minus j 2 pi of the capital N k n prime times e to the power of minus j 2 pi of the capital N k capital N. This last factor is always 1 and we are left with e to the power of minus j 2 pi of the capital N k n prime. In a clean way, the second summation is simply as written now in terms of n prime, which goes from n equals minus capital N1 until n equals minus 1. This n prime is just a dummy variable. We can replace it by anything we want, say L, R, R, and in particular we can also replace it by n. We can now group the two summations and have a summation from n equals minus n capital N1 until capital N1 and obtain the expression we intended to show. We will now apply a new change of variables. We will make m equals n plus capital N1. Let us see the new limits of the summation. We now have n equals minus capital N1 until capital N1. If we replace the values of n in the expression for m, we obtain 2 capital N1 and 0 respectively. The factor e to the power of minus j 2 pi capital N k n is replaced by the factor shown here and we end up with it, this expression. Now since the exponential of the sum is the product of the exponentials, we can write e to the power of minus j 2 pi over capital N k m minus capital N1 in terms of these two factors. Now the second factor does not depend on m, and since we're adding only with respect to m, we can move the second factor in front of the interval and obtain this expression. We now have a factor multiplying a summation from n, m equals 0 until 2 capital N1 of a geometric series. The ratio of this geometric series is alpha e equals e to the power of minus j 2 pi over capital N k. We just have to apply the, the, the well-known formula of the summation of a geometric series. A crucial fact that we have to pay attention to is that we can only apply this formula if alpha is not equal to 1. And this means that e to the power of minus j 2 pi over capital N k cannot be equal to 1, which entails that k cannot be 0 or multiple of capital N. 
So we are now left with this expression and believe it or not, we'll manage to write it as a sine over a sine. The way we do this is to note that we have e minus exponential of minus some argument in the numerator and denominator. To both, we are going to factor out exponential of minus the argument divided by two. We now see that if the argument z is complex, let's say jx, and this is already looking as a sign because the sign of x is e to the power of minus e to the power of jx minus e to the power of minus jx over 2j. After replacing the formula, we get several multiplying factors. The one that was already there in front of the expression, one in the numerator and another one in the denominator. This will all cancel out. In fact, in the fa in the factor in front of the expression, e to the power of j 2 pi k times capital N 1 over capital N, will multiply the factor in the numerator, e to the power of minus j 2 pi k times 2 capital N plus 1 over 2 capital N, leading to e to the power of minus j 2 pi over 2 capital N k, which is exactly the factor in the denominator, and we obtain this clean expression. As I have already mentioned, we have applied these tricks so that in the numerator and denominator we get something that resembles a sign. In fact, we can say that e to the power of jz minus e to the power of minus jz equals sine of z times 2j. After we apply this with z equals to j 2 pi k times 2 capital N 1 plus 1 over capital N in the numerator and with z equals 2 pi over 2 capital N in the denominator, we obtain this expression and we can cancel out the factor 2j obtaining this final expression. In one of the steps of the derivation, we had to consider k not to be zero or a multiple of capital N. So we still need to compute the coefficients ak when k equals zero or a multiple of capital N. This case is rather simple. When k is zero or multiple of capital N, the multipliers e to the power of minus j 2 pi over capital N times nk are equal to 1 for every n. We are left with a summation over a period of x of n. As we have discussed, we can replace the limits of integration to minus capital N1 until capital N1, where the function is non-zero and equal to 1, and this summation then boils down to 2 capital N1 plus 1, so we end up with 2 capital N1 plus 1 over capital N. 